All right. Now we'll be discussing the Carmel Convent paper. This is the unit test, obviously, of 10 CBSC mathematics. As you can see, the instructions are on the screen. Right. So I'm hoping that you will note down the answers and see whether you are getting the full marks or not. And please see your mistakes as well. All right. So without further ado, let's just begin the video. So instructions, obviously, time. I do not care. Oh, questions. So one to six, that is one mark. Seven to it should be nine, but okay, you get my point. That should be two marks. Then uh, nine to ten, three marks. Question eleven is a case study, four marks. Right? Okay. Moving on. Let's start with the test. Now he says, for what value of k, the pair of linear equations have no solution. Right? Okay. Now we know the condition when the pair of linear e equations do not have a solution. That is a one by a two is equal to b one by b two is not equal to c1 by c2. This is the condition for no solution. So let me apply this directly. Now obviously a1 is 3, a2 is 6. This is equal to, obviously here b1 is 1 and b2 is k is equal, is not equal to, okay, b by a, right? If I use the first two, I am getting 3k is equal to 6. So k is equal to 2, right? k is equal to 2. I just need to check whether this value of k actually satisfies the second inequality, no, non-equality, I should say, whether it satisfies or not. So if I put k as 2, so 1 by 2 is definitely not equal to 3 by 8, which makes sense. So that is why k is actually equal to 2. Moving on, let's move on to question number 2 now. He says solve the pair of linear equation and get the values of x and y. So these are my linear equations, right? So I can use any method I want, but I might use elimination because I personally prefer it. So, coefficient of x I'll try to make same, right? So, here the coefficient of x is 3. Coefficient of x is 1. So, I'll multiply this equation with 3. So, this becomes 3x plus 3y equal to 8 into 3, 24. And my second equation remains as it is 3x minus 7y equal to 12. Now, obviously, subtract it. So, sign change, sign change. This gets cancelled. This is 10y. This is 24 minus 12, that is obviously 12, so y turns out to be 6 by 5. So substitute it in the first one, I would say, because that's the easiest one. So x plus 6 by 5 is equal to 8, so x equal to 8 minus 6 by 5. So this is 40 minus 6, which is 34 by 5. So solution x equal to 34 by 5 and y is equal to 6 by 5. All right, moving on. He says, find the LCM of the smallest prime number. Now, the smallest prime, prime, prime number that I know. That is obviously 2. And the smallest composite number. So, 2 is not there. 3 is not there. 4. Yeah. You want the LCM of 2 and 4. Obviously, lowest common multiple. The answer is 4. Alright. Moving on. He says, form a quadratic polynomial whose zeros are this and this. Right. He rows. 1, 0 is 3 by 5. Right. That means the factor is x minus 3 by 5. Or I can say my factor is 5x minus 3. Same thing. Now, 1, 0 is 1 by minus 1 by 2. Or I can say my factor is x plus 1 by 2. Or I can say my factor is 2x plus 1. I do not involve fractions because when I calculate it, I might commit an error. So that is why I'm having integral coefficients only. Right? So just multiply it. This is 10x squared. Now, plus 5x minus 6x. So minus x minus 3. So, this is my quartic polynomial whose zeros are this and this. Moving on. Now, he says in triangle ABC. So, I have my triangle ABC. Angle B is 90. This is A. This is B. This is C. 90 degree. Yep. He says find the value of sine of A plus C. A plus C. This plus this. is so obviously 90 degree. Why did I even make the triangle? It was obvious. Okay, fine. So, sine 90 degree is actually nothing but 1. Alright, moving on. Now, he says sine e is 3 by 5. So, now I can make the triangle because I need it now. So, let me make my right triangle. Now, A, B, C. Again, 90 degree is here. He says sine e. So, that means this by this is 3 by 5. Right? So, I'll take my easiest triangle, the most convenient triangle. I'll consider a right triangle where this is 3 and this is 5. And obviously, automatically, this becomes 4. Done? Now, he says find the value of this. So, cos A. A is here. Cos. Base is 4. So, 4 by 5. Plus. 
tan A. So A is here, perpendicular is here, so that means 3 by 4 divided by secant A. I do not know, but I know cos A. That is 4 by 5, so reciprocated 5 by 4 plus cot A just found of tan A. So reciprocated, so 4 by 3. Right? Now, obviously, the LCM is 20. Okay, and this is 16 plus 15. So numerator actually becomes 31 by 20. And denominator. Uh, 12 obviously is there, so 15 plus 16. Ah, same thing. Divide by 31 by 12. So obviously 31, 31 gets cancelled. This becomes 12 by 20. So this becomes 3 by 5. Which is the answer. Alright, moving on. Find out the ratio between LCM and LCM of this number. So first of all, let me find the LCM. But let me write the prime factorization. Even though, I mean... I mean, LCM is actually, you know, quite divisible. You know what the LCM is. Lowest common multiple of 6, 15, and 20. That is nothing but 30. Alright, you do not even need to write the prime factorization. If you are doing that, then we need to evaluate our priorities in life. Alright, so, and LCM is obviously 2. Right, 3 are going to so 2. 2 is the highest common factor. Right, now he's is find out the ratio so 50 by 2 the answer is 15 by 1 or 15 is to 1 if you want to write it like this all right moving on now he says evaluate this quantity he says standard angles i know the value right so 4 into now this is sine 45 degree raised power 4 sine 45 is 1 by root 2 raised power 4 plus cos 45 degree raised power 4 so 1 by root 2 raised power 4 whole square yes minus 2 into now tan 30 whole square, so tan 30 is 1 by root 3 whole square plus quad 30. Quad 30 I do not know, but tan 30 is 1 by root 3. Quad 30 would be the reciprocal, so that means root 3 whole square. Plus cosecant 45. I do not know cosecant 45. I know sin 45. So reciprocate. So root 2 whole square. Done. Okay, so this is 4 into. Now 1 by root 2 raised by 4. So this is 1 divided by root 2 raised by 4. So root 2 into root 2, that is 2. Then again 2 you will get, so that is 4. So 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4. Right, this is nothing but 1 by 2. This part, 2. So this is 4 into 1 by 4. This gets cancelled, this is 1. Moving on, okay. So minus 2 into 1 by 3 plus 3, which is nothing but 10 by 3. Okay, which is minus 20 by 3. We'll leave with it. it be, we have a fraction here, but it's okay, it's okay. Plus 2. Plus 2, so plus 2. Now 2 plus 1, 3, 3 minus 20 by 3, that is 9 minus 20 minus 11 divided by 3. Please write it better in your school papers. I'm just calling it. Alright, moving on. Prove that root 7 is an irrational. Oh my god, we have done this, this question so many times. You will suppose that root 7 is a rational number, so that means I can write it as the ratio of two positive integers. A and B, positive integers, is not equal to 0. HCF of A and B is equal to 1. Then obviously you'll square it up, cross multiply, 7B square is equal to A square. So obviously 7 divides A square. Yes, 7 divides A square. Now, obviously if 7 divides A square, does 7 divides A? Yes, 7 divides A. Alright, now if 7 divides A, that means I can write A is equal to 7 into some integer. Positive integer in fact. Right, 7. Substituted here, from here you can get that 7 also divides B. Yes, I'm skipping a uh, step, but you know what to do. So, 7 divides A, 7 divides B, that means 7 is the common factor of A and B. Hmm, but what did you say? HCF, as in there is no common factor. But now you found a common factor. That means there's a contradiction. Now, why did this contradiction arise? Because your supposition is wrong. So, that means root 7 is irrational. Moving on. Now, he says it's alpha, beta, other roots. First of all, they should say zeros, but okay, I will not mind it. I will not take it personally. If alpha, beta are zeros of the quadratic polynomial, this, then find the value of this. Right? So, let me just simplify it. So, take first two. So, I'll take the LCM and I'll get beta plus alpha divided by alpha, beta minus 2 alpha, beta. This value I need to find out. Now, I know if alpha, beta are the zeros of this polynomial, that means sum of zeros. Alpha plus beta is minus 11 by 2. And product of zeros, that is 5 by 2. Let me just substitute. Beta plus alpha is nothing but alpha plus beta. Ah, Alright. Minus 11 by 2. 
फुल डिवाइड बाय अल्फा बीटा दैट इज फाइव बाय माइनस टू एंड टू फाइव बाय दिस ऑब्वियसली गेट्स कैंसल दिस गेट्स कैंसल आई हैव माइनस इलेवन बाय फाइव माइनस फाइव राइट सो दिस इज माइनस इलेवन माइनस ट्वेंटी फाइव बाय all right moving on i think this paper is over okay so with this we have completed the discussion please do let me know how many marks are you scoring i will no we have one more question wait question number 11 right now he says pair of linear equations when represented graphically shows a straight line so first of all here there is a correction it is 2x plus y equal to 2 right now this is a pair of uh, this is a linear equation Linear equation. This represents a line. This represents a line. Done. So let me read the first question. The first question is on the basis of the case study. Refer to the graph to find out the point of intersection and hence the solution of the given pair. Right. So point of intersection. Point of intersection of the lines. That means look for a point which lies on this line and which lies on this line. So obviously that point is this one. Point of intersection. This point is nothing but zero comma. Now he says you need to give the solution as well. So if I substitute x equal to zero and y equal to two, it will satisfy this equation. It will also satisfy this equation. That means this is nothing but the solution of the pair of linear equations. So this is done. So answer for the first one is zero comma two and x equal to zero, y equal to two. Now he says second question is two x plus y equal to two intersects x axis at what point? So intersection with x axis. Of two x plus y equal to two one. So that means he is talking about this line. Now intersection with x axis. My x axis is here. Intersection obviously is here. So which point is this? This is nothing but one comma zero. So point of intersection one comma zero. The answer to the second one. Now third is find the area of triangle formed by both the lines and the x axis. Both the lines and the x axis. All right. So I think let me change the color first. Take blue. All right. So he is talking about basically this triangle, right? So if I name this A B C, he is talking about the area of the triangle A B C. Now I can see the A triangle A B C is consisting of two triangles A O C and A O B. A O C and A O B. Obviously, if I add the areas of these two, I'll get the total area. So let me try to find out the area of the first one, A O C, right? So half base, A O C. Now obviously base is this one, which is nothing but O. You can read it pretty well. Into height, which is nothing but two, right? Plus area of A O B. That means this area. Now obviously this is nothing but one. So half into one into height, which is obviously two. So this becomes four plus one, which is five. Five is the correct answer for the third question. So with this, our discussion of the paper is over. Thank you and I will see you next time.